Hey everyone, Srini here from Unmistakable Creative. And in this video, I want to talk about how you build a second brain using MEM. If you've never heard of the second brain methodology, it comes from a guy named Tiago Forte, and it's a process for organizing information and knowledge so that you can get the most out of your knowledge and have information accessible to you whenever you need it. And it's based on a four-part structure using the acronym PARA, which stands for Projects, Areas of Responsibility, Resources, and Archives. So I think the first thing you have to do is understand the distinction between what are projects and what are areas of responsibility. So projects are basically anything that has, uh, a project is basically anything that has a set timeline and is going to be done at some point. So you can see here, I have a couple of different projects. One is a course that I'm creating on attention mastery. Uh, the other is a class that I'm taking on masterclass, Annie Leibowitz's portrait masterclass. The assumption here is that at some point, these things are going to be done. Therefore, they're projects. Areas of responsibility are different because they're things that you do on an ongoing basis. So as a writer and a blogger, because I publish new blog posts on a weekly basis or I create content like this on a weekly basis, anything that falls into my editorial calendar ends up being an area of responsibility. And then resources are exactly what they sound like, book notes, podcasts, things that you capture from the web. And then finally, you have archives, which are things that you're done with that you're no longer using. So for example, when I am done with these, I'll actually tag them as archives. So that way they actually don't show up in my projects. And I tried a couple of different ways to do this. The first thing that you could do is you could actually create a separate mem for projects, areas, resources, and archives. And what I realized about doing that was that actually wasn't the best way to do things because of the fact that even if you create these individual pages, then you actually have to go through and link all of the related items yourself. Whereas if you use tags for your projects, areas, resources, and archives, then you basically can create an individual mem for each project and each resource. So let me give you a, a few different examples of how we've done this. So in the case of projects, as I mentioned, I'm working on this course called Attention Mastery. And you can see here that I actually have separate mems for the tasks related to the project, another one for the modules and content, another one for references. And part of the reason that I do that is because if you actually you just put everything onto this one page, it can become a jumbled up mess and become somewhat overwhelming to look at. <clears throat> You can see here, this is actually under projects. And if we actually click on the projects tag, you'll see here under the list that anything that I've tagged as a project actually shows up under projects. And if we go to areas of responsibilities, we can go back to our timeline here. And we look, you'll see here that I have the editorial calendar. And if I go here, everything that is tagged with editorial calendar and editor areas of responsibility will actually show up here. So this really depends on what your primary areas of responsibility are, but they're basically the things that you do on a weekly basis. For me, like I said, that's something like writing or hosting a podcast. So that actually wouldn't go under a project because it's ongoing. And then Last but not least, resources. And I've talked a little bit about this before in previous videos where my primary resource as a writer and as a podcast host are book notes. And you can see here that I have all my various books from the different books that I've been reading. And then the other thing that's really cool, this is actually one thing that I really find awesome about. So for example, this book was called The Self-Employed Life and the person who wrote it was Jeffrey Shaw. And Jeffrey Shaw also happened to have been a podcast guest. And so you can see here, I've taken notes also on my conversation with him from our podcast. And I was able to put a title in and all of that. So the links are all linked together. So anytime there's a reference to Jeffrey Shaw, I not only see his book notes, but I also see any notes I have from our interview together. And then finally, you have archives. So as I said, let's go back to the timeline here. So as I said, your first option is to create a separate mem, one for projects, one for areas, one for resources, and one for archives. And then the second option is to use tags for projects, areas, resources, and archives. And I think that using the tags is a lot easier than uh, it would be to do this because this requires a lot more manual effort on your part, which in my mind defeats the purpose of mem. But within projects, areas, resources, archives, you're gonna create different mem for individual projects, individual resources. For example, even in your areas, you might have a blog post you want to write. So I have a mem for, or a tag for editorial calendar, but I have a mem for each individual blog post or each piece of content that I want to create. 
And this is something that typically tends to evolve as you use any more tool, your second brain will start to grow. But I think the, the best way to get started is just to set up this structure and to start tagging the various pieces of information that you're putting into your knowledge management system with the various tags of projects, areas, resources, and archives. And for those of you who are interested, I'll actually include a link to my interview from the Unmistakable Creative Podcast with Tiago Forte, who talks about how to build a second brain. And the nice thing about the second brain framework is that it's tool agnostic. So you could use it inside of any tool, but obviously this is a, a tutorial on MEM. So here we've talked about how to build a second brain inside of MEM. 